Time to take back our city. The colonial press resembled today's anything-goes world of internet news. Newspapers at that time were a way of passing information. There was no television, obviously, there was no radio. This is how people were able to communicate. The presses of the time were involved in this rebellion once the leaders had made themselves known. And I think the journalists were working to get the message out that they weren't living in a just and fair society. They were being colonized by people who were not treating them as citizens. Samuel Adams created committees of correspondence throughout the American colonies to share not only Boston's story, but also the version of history that was unfolding as the Sons of Liberty saw it. And saying, look guys, you don't know what's happening up there. We have to get behind Boston. This isn't just about Boston. This is about the 13 colonies. This is about building a country. As Ben Franklin's famous political cartoon made clear, the colonies either had to unite or die. Ben Franklin was an early proponent of, of unity of the colonies, and so he designed this uh, cut-up snake in which he demonstrated that separate, the colonies would lack power, and together they could be very powerful. Samuel Adams really saw the propaganda use of the Boston Massacre, the propaganda value of the Boston Tea Party. Days after the Boston Massacre, young artist Henry Pelham produced an engraving of the event, depicting the British soldiers firing on orderly civilians. The engraving that Revere manufactured was copied from Henry Pelham. He didn't really get the credit. It very well could be the most effective piece of propaganda in American history. It really galvanized support for those who were fighting for American independence. This version was up on walls all around Massachusetts, inspiring a whole new generation of angry civilians to become rebels. Sons of Liberty, sponsored by revolutionary craft brewer Sam Adams, for the love of beer.